Hello YouTube stackers. This is ST with Silver Stacking 101, where we always believe in staying stacked and packed. Stacked with silver, gold, food, ammo, and packed with the means necessary to defend our stack. In this video, we are going to discuss the silver to gold ratio. How many ounces of silver it takes to purchase one ounce of gold. Pumpers frequently use this statistic to set unrealistic expectations for silver returns. On the surface, their argument seems to make sense. However, there are two fallacies when using the silver to gold ratio. These two fallacies make it somewhat an interesting number, but not a very useful number for our purposes. The first fallacy is if the spread widens between silver and gold, pumpers give the illusion that it is because silver is underpriced. Maybe gold's overpriced. We don't know. But it even goes much deeper than that. I want to talk about beef and beans to take the emotion out of gold and silver. Beef and beans. Sounds like a great uh, burrito. Beef and beans are both commodities. As food prices rise, Obviously, the price of beef and beans both tend to rise. However, each product has its own supply curves and demand curves that work independently of each product. They're not joined necessarily at the hip. So when demand increases or supply decreases for either one of the two products, we will see the gap widen or narrow. The gap itself and the margin of the gap does not tell us which product will increase or decrease. Each product is going to behave according to its supply and demand curves. In order for the price to change, something has to interfere with the status quo and alter the curve's trajectory. Using the gap between the two products doesn't really give us anything useful. The same thing applies to gold and silver. Gold and silver are both commodities. As the price rises for precious metals, price pressures are brought to bear in an upward fashion on both gold and silver. However, gold and silver each have their own supply and demand curves that work independently of each product. The gap can widen or narrow. Let's go back to the beef and beans. In the 1970s, we had price controls on beef. This caused the gap between beef and beans to be more narrow than the market ordinarily would have allowed. If we go back and use that historical data for today, it's not a fair comparison. Let's go back to the gold-silver ratio, which used to be fixed by law. It was an artificial alteration with the price. If we take today's gap and try to measure against something that was artificially manipulated, it's not going to give us a relevant number either. 
I am not saying totally ignore the gold to silver ratio. I am saying don't put a great amount of credence and base your decisions off the ratio alone. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree? Subscribe if you haven't. Please give me a thumbs up. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And remember, stay stacked and packed.